So now we come to an extension of the original tutorial, but we're still going to use the same model because that's the one we are familiar with. Um, so the model that we had was here in, in, in these pages. Uh, and then we had, for example, the class diagram representation um, like this. And uh, we also knew, we also saw that we have this equal representation here uh, where it's like this tree editor. And now what we want to do in, in this part is we want to add support for OCL constraints. So for that, we need um, another editor to make it a bit easier. Uh, so we will go to install new software. Then um, usually we just take the latest releases. So um, yep, this one. And then we look for uh, OCL because what we want to get is some OCL support. <clears throat> yeah, then we have uh, here the editors. We have the examples, uh, and that should be it. So let's add those. Yep, we accept the agreements. It downloads it and installs it. And then as usual, it asks us to restart. Once it is restarted, uh, what we will do is we will take our existing eCore um, file and we will try to open it in the newly installed editor. So we'll say open with, and then we will use the OCL in eCore editor. <clears throat> this might take a little bit of time. Um, we have to convert it to an OCL project. Yep, that's fine. And then we see an OCL or a textual overview of our class diagram. Uh, in this editor here, we see the classes, we see the attributes that these that this class has, the attributes that the other class has. We see um, the compositions here. Um, they have a slightly different notation than in the, the two models that we saw before. Of course, it's different from the graphical model, and it's also slightly different from the eco model uh, representation as the tree, but it shows the same content here. And this is actually where we can also uh, create new OCL constraints. Let's add maybe an invariant, this one here, and this invariant also needs to live in some context. So we will put it inside the class web because that's the then the context of that invariant. Um, it has this name, at least one page, and it refers to elements of web. So if we hover over it, we see that it resolves pages to be, belong to, um, let me just focus this, to belong to uh, web page webs, so to, to this class. And then um, shows us some information of the type of pages. It's an ordered set. Uh, and then we can use the size operation in of, of OCL that we in, invoke on this. And we say the size needs to be greater than one. So um, one, one thing that's a bit important here is if you, this is what some students observed in previous years, once you edit OCL here, and then you go back to the class diagram editor and you do changes here, it might lead to inconsistent versions of the model or your, your editor might crash. So the best thing is then um, if you continue editing here. So if we, for example, would remove uh, stuff like this attribute name, uh, let's, no, that's not the way. Um, Let's see how we comment out here. That seems to work. So we commented that out. Let's have a look whether we still have name in web um, in the eco model. No, it's gone. So these, these editors, they're all synchronized. Here's web name is also gone. So we should from now on maybe just ignore this. And uh, if you want to use OCL, you can 
use this editor also to edit all of the, the eco model. So we have now different representations. We have the visual representation, we have this tree-like representation in some kind of XML format, and then we have uh, a textual representation of the class diagram as well, and they all refer to the same model. <clears throat> so let's add some further uh, elements here, like this uh, unique names. So the, the way to read this invariant here is um, now we again start from the context of web because this is this invariant is part of the class web so that's how we show the context here then we navigate to pages um, and if you remember pages was this uh, composition relation here so then we can navigate to name so the name of these pages this one was a set and now name is one element so now what we need to do is we need to uh, say that we want this as a set so this combined uh, navigation here gives us a set of names we ask for it to be converted to a set we get the size of it and we say that this must be the same as the um, size just of the pages so this means that if you would have two pages with the same name um, then this set here would be basically one less than uh, this set here, just of the pages. Okay, um, yeah, now we need to check whether this OCL has any effect, right? So um, what we want to do is we could, again, create an instance as we did in, in the code before and then try to validate it, but uh, there's also um, a, a nice feature here which allows us to create a dynamic instance. So um, we can click on a class, maybe start again from the web, and then um, we can say create a dynamic instance. This will also be stored in XMI format. So, um, yeah, let's just save it there. Then this one is a representation of the instance. So this editor is, is very, very similar uh, to what you had seen before. It also shows us the kind of the class diagram representation, but we now want the instance representation. So for this web, um, let's just save it as is. We, we didn't really do anything. Now we can um, try to validate it. And it gives us an issue here. Let's see why. The at least one page constraint is violated. So this refers to the name of the OCL constraint that is now violated. Let's have a look. Um, at least one page says that the page's size needs to be greater than one. So now let's create a new child of this instance in this instance here. Mm. Yep. Now this web has two children. So now let's again run the validation of the whole thing. It again gives us troubles in web, but now uh, it says we don't have unique names in the constraint for web. So what happens here is um, we are evaluating these pages names as set. This is a set of size one because the names are both uh, null. Um, and then pages size is a set of size two. So uh, this is not the same. So now what we need to do is we need to change here for at least one of them. So this is the properties view again. Um, so let's see the, the web page property now we're editing the instance um so we can give it some name maybe google and then this one we could call yahoo um and now we can try to validate again validation successful great um so now this instance here satisfies all of the ocl constraints in this class diagram Okay, <clears throat> um, there is something uh, which is not so nice uh, about this editor. So this again, this happened um, maybe to students in previous years that when you have attributes with the name name, which we do here, um, then this might mess up things in uh, writing constraints. So usually when you when you create a class diagram where you plan on writing constraints with this editor here, uh, it might be a good idea to avoid the name name of attributes. So here, I don't know, instead of name here, we could uh, call it web name. 
Uh, then of course we have should have some oh, doesn't even show us a problem here. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, ah, no, because this refers to the name of um, web pages, so we could call it page name, then it can't resolve this. Uh, let's see, does it have code completion? Mm, not, not so nice. Um, okay, so, um, and now after we did these changes, I'm Quite sure that the dynamic instance no longer works because there we have issues as well. Um, let's open it in the text editor and see the problem here. Name, we have renamed that to page name. So we can fix this <clears throat> and then uh, we should be able to load this again. There are no problems with this file. Good. Uh, and now we can see our instance again. And let's see if we can validate the instance again. Yep, again, successful. OK, so yeah, if you have these instances which are stored in some XMI file um, and you, you change things in the model, then they very likely become invalid and, and you have to fix them manually. Not sure what happens if we do the refactor of Eclipse, if it's um, clever enough. Let's have a look. Um, Page name. Hmm. Looks like we don't really have a refactor menu here. Okay, so <laughs> no refactoring. We have to do it manually. 